and Darcy's going to start pressure canning. Can you can with this pressure cooker? No. Can you can with this? Unfortunately, no. This is a pressure cooker. It's electric, so it lets you not have to use a stove top to do this with, but it is not appropriate for doing pressure canning. I'll link you down below where the National Center of Food Home Preservation does a whole article on the fact that the science behind canning in one of these is not okay. Um, so read it for me. Thanks. Can you can in this? Certain sizes of stock pots you can can in, but they need to be water bath canning, not pressure canning. And it has to do with how big your jars are, how much water space that you can get above them. But you can water bath can in any stock pot that you have, but you can't pressure can in them. Can you pressure can in this? You betcha. And Darcy's gonna start pressure canning. Today is a, I know, a box unboxing opening. I'm all excited about it of my new Presto pressure canner. It's the 23 quart, um, but I got it. Uh, I have a funny story to tell about it as I open the plastic. I thought I had one. I'm pretty sure I had one. Uh, I bought it back in 2011 thinking I was gonna can, and I never did. And when I went to go pull it out because I made a promise to Lisa over at Sutton's Days that I would start canning, um, I couldn't find my canner. and. Talking with my dad, he said he had it. And I kept thinking it was weird that I don't remember ever letting him borrow it. But evidently I did, so the day I went to go pick it up, I got it. I was all excited, I even messaged Lisa and said, look, 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 it's mine, I've got it in my hands, I'm gonna be a king. And because of being sick and, uh, and just being overly excited and thinking, oh, well, this is it, I didn't even pay attention to the fact that what I have is a pressure cooker in my hand, not a pressure canner. So um, we could not find mine. At some point I must have given it away or sold it or something. I just don't remember. So I had to go ahead and shell out money for a new one. Um, but here we go. This is the Presto 23 quart pressure canner and cooker. And I am all excited to open this up and walk through it with you. So. Inside, we have, doesn't it just start glowing and the angel, angels start singing about how awesome this is? It is the canning pot. And we get into it, because I like to wrap it up really well. Two hours later. Okay, so inside I have the pot. Uh, and on the inside it comes with your canning rack, which you're gonna need. And because this is a, a rack, I mean a canner that you can actually have two tiers, you'll have to purchase a separate canning rack um, to make sure that you have something to separate the two layers of jars. You don't want them touching. You can find these probably at any garage sale, thrift store. Um, you can get these on Amazon. Um, they are probably available everywhere, especially this time of year, um, right after the summer. But you'll need a second one of these if you plan on doing double canning. Um, before you get started with it too, I can already tell how much is on it. You will need to wash all these parts in some warm soapy water because it has a kind of oil on it from manufacturing to help protect the aluminum. So make sure you wash all this before you use it the first time. Also, I think I might have said it, the instructions for your canner uh, and some extra little precautionary things that we will set aside. Make sure you keep the, um, the instructions for your canner because you will need those any anytime. And then in this top portion is the lid to your canner. Inside is your steam gauge. You want to make sure not to throw this piece of styrofoam away because you don't want to lose it. The steam gauge, it tells you the pressure that you're working with. 
Then right here are your pressure regulators that uh, this will regulate the pressure that's coming out of your end of your pen. Then your lid already comes with a rubber gasket that you'll want to clean. These will have to be replaced after a time um, when you notice that it starts to get dry. And one tip that I've seen on quite a few videos what, that I watched while trying to research this to make sure this is what I wanted was to take the gasket, put I'm gonna do it really quickly here. I'm gonna wash this anyway, so I'm gonna do it for you. Is to put a tiny little bit of oil in your hand. I'm using avocado oil because I know it has a really high smoke point. And then run your gasket through your hands with the oil on it to help keep your gasket supple uh, so that while you're canning that it doesn't dry out even more and it helps prolong the life of your gasket. And it fits right back on the inside just like this. And it's one of those things that it's easy to purchase and you might want to have an extra one around just like you do your Instapot lid um, to have it just in case you're, you need to can and it's already worn out and you weren't paying attention. Uh, the other parts that come with it are your, your vent pipe and your um, interlocking uh, interlocking mechanism that when you know this has come to full pressure, this will pop up and it will lock your top so that you can't open it. That's when you know that you're ready to go. Um, and that is the extent of the canner. Now two things I'm going to show you um, are the, the two books that I have so far. Um, I know there are probably a ton of canning books that I could have and that will work really well, but so far this is where I started. The Blue Book, Guide to Preserving. This is not the full canning book, but it's a good one to have gotten me started that I was reading and getting an idea about what I might like to try. Um, but this one is the Complete Guide to Home Canning by the USDA. You can find this on Amazon for $10, or you can go to the website from the National Center for Food Home Preservation and they have this available as a free download. It's a PDF that you can just download to your computer. You can print it off yourself, bind it how you like. I just felt like the $10 was worth way more to have it bound and ready for me to go than to try to print it off myself. Um, but what I think that I may do is over time, I'm going to have the spine cut off and three hole punch and put this in a binder because that way I can put notes in as I uh, do things if I want. I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but that's a thought. And you can see I've already been studying, um, spent the day underlining like crazy, trying to make sure I took note of things that I thought were important. But something else, in researching which canner I was going to get, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about whether or not you can can on a glass top oven. I have a um, Frigidaire Gallery 5 um, burner oven, a uh, ceramic glass top, and I called the manufacturer finally and got a hold of somebody who knew what they were talking about and found out that in fact I can can on this glass top. There are some that you cannot. You need to call your manufacturer to make sure. One of the um, things that was also important is that your canner does not extend past the outer ring of your heating element more than an inch. Because what you don't want to do is transfer heat that gets trapped up under the um, canner as you're cooking, as you're canning, uh, to transfer heat further into your glass top that wasn't prepared for all that heat and crack your glass top. And something about, I'm going to do this really quickly and see if I can do it one-handed. So something I want to show you about the canner is that also for a glass top um, stove, you need a canner that has a flat bottom. A, an enamel water bath canner, um, many of them have like a ridge around the vent that you cannot use because it's not um, a flat surface. This, the setting surface, is flat here, um, and that's what you need for your canner. The actual surface that sits on the burner is well under the 12 inches of my, I measured my uh, burner, it's well under. So it will not extend past it, and it will have some airflow here before uh, any of that heat is trapped overly much on the bottom of the canner. So that's something that you have to, to worry about if you have a glass top like I do, that in fact you can can on your glass top stove, but please check with your manufacturer first. Um, I did ask some friends to see if they were using their glass top, and they were, but at the end when I could finally find somebody at the manufacturer, I called to make sure that it was okay. So I hope that you will 
uh, follow along with my canning journey. I hope to get started pretty soon. Um, I'm going to take a couple of days to go visit a friend. And when I get back, I'm going to be canning away like crazy. So thanks for watching. There's a video right here that I'm sure you'll be interested in watching. And I'll talk to you later.